In this video, we'll continue our understanding of regression analysis, specifically testing for significance. In section 14.1, even though we can compute the correlation coefficient, we know that it is subject to sampling error because we used sample data and therefore had to conduct a test of significance. Likewise, the regression coefficients are based on sample data and are therefore also subject to sampling error. Hence, we need a testing procedure to determine whether our regression slope coefficient, our beta sub 1, is statistically significant. So here we have our hypothesis test. Uh, it's a two-tailed test because it's equals, not equals. If our beta sub 1, or our slope, is 0, that means there is no linear relationship between x and y. If our beta sub 1 or our slope is not equal to 0, meaning our, our, our slope could be negative 0.5, could be 0.75, some other value, then there is a linear relationship. Excel will provide us with the test statistic t as well as the p-value we need to conduct our testing approaches. So it's important to understand how to determine the test statistic as well as how to read these values in the Excel output. Here is our t test statistic, where we'll take our estimated slope from the sample minus our hypothesized slope. In this case, we're setting it at zero. We hypothesize that there's no relationship, and we're looking for evidence to tell us whether or not there is a relationship. And then uh, underneath, this is our standard error, specifically the standard error of our slope. The degrees of freedom will be n minus 2. For our critical value or our cutoff point, we can use the appendix F or we can use uh, Excel. And if we're using the p-value approach, recall that our p-value rule states that if our p-value is less than alpha, we reject the null. Note that here it says alpha divided by 2 because it's a two-tailed test. Diving a bit deeper into the estimate of the standard error of the least square slope, that's this formula right here. Just like we learned in previous chapters about the standard error that comes from using different samples, the same applies with regression lines. Just as the distribution of possible sample means has a standard error, the possible regression slopes also have a standard error. While the formula is provided here, we will fortunately be using Excel. But again, conceptually, we need to understand that there is a standard error of the slope that we need to account for. So we're going to continue working on problem 25. This is the same regional retailer who wants to see if our variation in average monthly store sales can in part be explained by the size of the store measured in square feet. Now specifically, we're looking at part B. We want to test for the significance of the slope coefficient of the regression model using a level of significance of 0.05. In other words, we're going to test for the significance of our B1 in the regression model. So for our null and all alternative hypotheses, it states that in the null, our beta sub 1, or our slope, if it equals to 0, that means there's no linear relationship. It's not significant. For our alternative hypothesis, it states that our beta, or our, our beta 1, or our slope, does not equal to 0. If that's the case, then that means there is a linear relationship, and it is significant. The alpha that we've identified is the 0 0.05. Now we need to find the degrees of freedom, which is n minus 2. So recall we were looking at 21 stores. So if we take 21 minus 2, we get a degrees of freedom of 19. And if we go to the appendix F, we can find our critical t value using the degrees of freedom of 19 and our two tail test and alpha values to get plus or minus 2.093. Alternatively, you can use Excel, uh, typing in equals t dot inv dot 2t, parentheses, the alpha value, and our degrees of freedom. Now, we've already run the regression analysis previously, so I'm just going to take our data again to examine here for our uh, testing of significance. So again, I always recommend writing what my um, b sub 0 and b sub 1 are in my table so that I know to use the correct numbers into my formula. So here's my t-test statistic, and what we're going to do is we're going to find the values from our uh, regression analysis. So our b sub 1, that's our slope from our sample data. So here's my b sub 1, I'm looking for the coefficient. So that's this number right here at 25.3160. And our hypothesized slope, our b sub 1, is 0. 
and then our standard error is going to be the number to the right of our slope. So if we see the column right here, it says standard error, and we want the standard error of the slope, remember our B1. So I know I'm going to use this value right here. So plugging in our numbers, we can now solve for our t test statistic, and that is 7.08. Now if you notice though, and when we look at our Excel output, if I take my um, slope coefficient right here, and I divide it by my standard error of the slope, I get my t test statistic right here, 7.0780. So it's helpful to understand conceptually how the test statistic works, that's why we do it here by hand with the help of Excel, or when you're looking at Excel, you can just find and read the t-test statistic that we want for our um, hypothesis test. So now we want to go ahead and um, compare our information to make a decision. Recall with the critical value method, we will compare our t-test statistic to our critical t-value that you either found in Appendix F or you used Excel. So because our test statistic of 7.08 is greater than our critical value of 2.093, that means it's in the rejection region in the tail, we will reject the null and can conclude that the population slope coefficient is significant. There is a linear relationship. Again, I, I suggest when our decision is reject the null, I imagine crossing out the null statement and only interpreting what's left. In this case, our alternative states that there is a linear relationship. It is significant. It's not zero. We also need to understand this concept of the sum of squares, which is the measures of variation in our regression analysis. So the formula here is SST equals SSR plus SSE. Let's look at what each component means carefully. Our total sum of squares, which is this formula right here, is the measure of the total variation in our regression. Our SSR, or the sum of squares regression, is the measure of explained variation. So this tells us how well our regression model or our equation represents the data that we've collected. And then our SSE, this is the measure of unexplained variation. So this is the errors between our model and our actual data. And while it's unexplained, what it's saying is it is unexplained by our, by our independent variable or our x. There could be some other reason why we're seeing variation, but we're not studying those other variables. So while we have these formulas here, again, we're going to let Excel help us understand it so we don't have to calculate it by hand but we do need to understand the relationship between SST, SSR, and SSE, and that when I add my measures of explained variation with the measure of my unexplained variation, I get my total variation. Looking at our regression analysis we ran for problem 25, we're going to look at where SST, SSR, and SSE lie. So it's actually here in the ANOVA, or the second table in our data. So SS, this is our sum of squares. So we'll be looking at this column right here. It says regression, residual, and total. So our regression is our sum of squares regression. Our residual, remember residual is another way of saying errors. This is our sum of squared errors. And then our total, that's our total sum of squares. And when we hear total, we know that implies adding up. So what, I, what we'll see is if I add my sum of squares regression with my sum of squared errors, I get my total sum of squares. So there's my SSR, there's my SSE, and there's my SST. So what we're learning to do is how to read a table. But why do we want to read that table? Because the information in our sum of squares is going to help us find our coefficient of determination, or R squared. This is the portion of the total variation in our dependent or y variable that is explained by its relationship with the independent variable. And it's going to be somewhere between 0 and 1, so it's a positive number. So here's our formula for r squared. We will take our sum of squares regression number and divide it by our total sum of squares. Note that for the coefficient of determination for a single independent variable case, r squared can also be found by lowercase r squared. 
And if you recall, lowercase r is our sample correlation coefficient we learned in section 14.1. So let's see what that means. Again, we're looking at our output from our problem 25. So to get our r squared, I'm going to look at my sum of squares section in the table, and I'm going to take SSR, that's the top number here, my regression, and divide it by my SST, that's my total down here, SSR and SST. Our regression output also provides us with R square in the table above, right here where it says R square, that's this number right here. That's also our coefficient of determination R squared which can also be found in a single case where we take our co coefficient correlation of r of 8.8515 and square that and we will get our r squared. So you can see how the numbers are related to each other on the same printout. So again, continuing on with problem 25 in part c, we're now going to use our estimated regression model to find what percentage of the total variation in our average monthly sales can be explained by the store size. So let's go ahead and find our coefficient of determination. Bringing over our output data from the regression analysis we already ran, we will focus on the sum of squares column. So for our sum of squares of the regression, that's this number here, we'll place that in the numerator, and then we need our SST or our sum of squares total. And that's this bottom number here, and we'll put that in the denominator. Then, when I divide the two numbers, I will get a coefficient of determination of 0 0.7250. If we look in that first table in our regression analysis where it says regression statistics, we also get this same number right here with r squared that says 0 0.7250. In other words, approximately 72.5% of the variation in our average monthly sales can be explained by the store size. That sounds like a pretty good number to explain how store size impacts our average monthly sales. However, just like with anything else, we have to conduct a test of significance. So I'm going to highlight it here briefly, and you can read it more in the textbook. So here to test for the significance of our coefficient determination, we're going to find our test statistic of f as well as the p-value to figure out if our coefficient of determination is significant. In other words, can we use that 72.5% to really explain uh, the average monthly sales? So to get our test statistic, what we'll do is we're going to divide our MSR by MSE. So that's this number here and this number here. And we'll divide it to get our F test statistic. So that's 50.0983. Now, we'll compare that to a critical value, which we have to use Appendix H. So with Appendix H, this is where we're looking at our degrees of freedom. So because we're only working with uh, one variable, our degrees of freedom will be focused on for the first uh, D is the, the first column, this column one right here. And then uh, our degrees of freedom, recall, is N minus 2. So we will do our n minus 2, which was 21 minus 2, and that's 19. So we'll look at the row 19. So our critical value is 4.381. That's why when I compare our f test statistic from Excel to our critical f value, we can see that our test statistic is larger than our critical value. So it's going to be in the rejection region, in the tail. So we will reject the null. So if we reject the null, that means that our coefficient of determination is significant. We can explain the variation with our uh, square footage. We can also simply read the p-value in our Excel output. So here our significance f, that's our p-value. That's the observed significance. In this case, it's 0 0.0000. It's actually much, a very small number if you keep going out several decimal places. Um, but at this point, we know it's small enough to do comparison. So because our p-value of 0 0.0000 is smaller than our alpha value of 0 0.05, we will reject the null and can conclude that the population coefficient of determination is greater than 0. Note it's greater than 0 because our coefficient of determination is somewhere between 0 and 1. This means that our independent variable, our square uh, footage or of the store size, explains a significant proportion of the variation in our dependent variable, which is monthly average sales. If you have any questions, just let me know.